everyone, it's Michelle Lupton here for Picket Fence Studios and I'm not making this card today. I'm going to show you how I'm going to remake this card but not as a Christmas card. So the stamp that I'm using in the background is a wreath for all seasons. So it's not just a Christmas wreath. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to actually make this into a birthday card. So I'm starting with some white cardstock. This is Nina Solar White and I'm just using my um, spatula here to add some Picket Fence Studios paper glitz. This is in the colour Pink Prom Night. So I'm going to make a very pink card today and I'm doing this step first because I'm actually going to be using the Pink Prom Night paper glitz um, to die cut um, with. So I need that to set off to the side and dry while I start the rest of the card. So as you can see, I've pulled out this um, A Wreath for All Seasons stamp. It's a very large stamp, so it takes up a fair amount of real estate on a standard card front. And I'm actually going to be stamping it here onto some watercolour pa um, paper. So this is Canson watercolour paper. And I'm just prepping it with my powder tool. And this particular watercolour paper is slightly textured. So it makes it really important to use a stamp positioning tool like the Misty, like you can see me using right now, because I am going to have to stamp it multiple times um, because, yeah, you're just not going to get really good coverage the first time just because of all of that texture. And you can see I'm going in being really careful to make sure I press down on every single little area on this cardstock to make sure I've got good ink coverage. So I'm using uh, Versamark ink for my stamping here. This is a clear sticky ink because I'm going to do some embossing over the top of it. So I have some white embossing powder. This particular um, embossing powder is from Hero Arts. And you can see there's still a little bit in the middle that I still missed um, because of this textured cardstock but that's okay because I actually had planned to stamp over the top of my embossing and emboss again so I got some really thick um, embossing on there so I'm just inking up my stamp one more time and making sure I press and I'm paying particular attention to that area where it didn't stamp particularly well the first time and there I've got it um, the second time and yeah, got really good coverage that second time. And here I go again, a third time. I'm actually going to do it one more time just to add, um, yeah, an extra layer of embossing because I really wanted that embossing to stand out. So even though I had got complete coverage of the stamp by the second, second time, um, I wanted extra um, thick embossing. All right, so that's all done and nice and cool. And now I'm pulling out my Zig Clean Color Watercolor um, brushes. And I've just chosen at random some pink um, markers. So I want this card to be very, very pink. So not just the pink of the paper glitz, spa, uh, pa the pink prom night paper glitz, that is but all of these different pinks um, from the Zig markers. So I'm just following the lines of the stamp and the embossing that I've done and colouring into the sort of major areas of that stamp. And now I'm spraying with water. So I've got this spray bottle and I'm just liberally spraying all over with um, just tap water nothing special there and you can see that the color just spreads into those areas where I've um, got embossing so the embossing resists the color really really well and the color just spreads out um, into the areas so I'm just using my heat tool to dry that off um, I'm being careful not to overheat the panel because I don't really want to re um, melt 
the embossing. Um, but I am going to add some more color. So I'm using the palest pink on the outside here. But this time, I'm actually going to go in with a water brush. I didn't want to spray it um, again at this stage um, because I wanted to make sure that um, the pale colour on the outside of this wreath that I'm colouring now um, didn't just get lost off the side of the card. Sometimes when you spray with lots and lots of water very liberally, um, a lot of your colour can actually end up just running off the side of your card and you lose it. So um, yeah, I decided to go in with my water brush instead. And again with the heat tool to make sure that is nice and dry. Because even though I did use a water brush, I used a fair bit of water. All right, so now I've pulled out this um, Slimline Happy Birthday Word Topper die. And I'm going to cut this from my piece of cardstock that I've added my um, paper glitz, uh, the pink prom night paper glitz. And I did make sure that my paper glitz was completely dry before I die cut this. And I popped it on to my card and I thought with so much pink behind it and with only just one layer of that, I thought it was getting a little bit lost. So I decided to add something as well. But I also decided to cut a little panel of a little strip of cardstock with the paper glitz to put on the left hand side of my card um, because my image my um, wreath is sort of hanging off the left hand side of the card I kind of wanted something in the design to anchor that um, wreath to so when I put it onto my card base oops I need a bit more glue there. When I put it onto my card base, I'm making sure that I line it up on the right hand side of the card there, and then my little strip of um, paper glitz can go on the left hand side, and that just provides a little visual anchor for the image to sort of latch onto so it doesn't look like it's just floating in space. Sometimes I like things to look like they're floating in space, but not today. And besides which, I was trying to make a card very much the same as the Christmas card that I showed you uh, at the beginning of the video. Anyway, back to my sentiment. I decided it was getting a bit lost there. So I've cut the same die um, from a couple of other pieces of white cardstock and I'm going to layer them up so that that sentiment will be nice and chunky and um, have a bit of um, sort of heft to it um, and also from the side you'll actually be able to see the white cardstock peeking through a little bit which will help to aid the legibility of the sentiment. I always find that if you have a sentiment the same colour as the background you need to add something different than colour to increase the legibility. I hate cards where the sentiment is illegible. Um, I always want to make sure that my cards have very legible sentiments because you don't want the person who you give a card to to sort of peer at it with a confused expression on their face. That's not the reaction that you want from a card. So by adding these extra layers, um, it sort of adds a bit of a shadow behind the sentiment and aids in its legibility. So I've just adhered that down onto my card and I'm just going to cut off the excess. I'm just making sure it's all lined up nice and straight across the card. I'm going to cut off the excess and there I'll be done. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this card and we'll see you next time. Bye.